Good morning. It's Tuesday, October the 20th, and this is The Drill. Thank you, thank you. The prayer of the day comes from dailyscripture.net. Lord Jesus, you loved me first and you gave your life for me. Fill me with a joyful heart and a generous spirit that is ready to serve and do whatever you command. Amen. Remember that we have free will and that we are moral agents. Only one agenda item for today, and that item is part one of chapter one from the book titled Masculinity Amidst Madness. But before I get to that, I wanted to um, apologize to my audience for the uh, past few days where I've been reading an article from American conservative magazine uh, called Counterfeiting uh, Conservatism. It was uh, a poorly written article, and um, I didn't like uh, reading it. I didn't like the way it sounded. I didn't like the way it read, uh, but I went ahead and did it anyways. And what I should have done was taken the good parts in there, condensed them, and uh, created something out of that instead. So, uh, lesson learned, and that's not going to happen again. So, right now, on to chapter one, part one of Masculinity Amidst Madness. There's a war all around you. It's not a silent war, but in your face, from all angles. The enemy deploys columns and weapons where you work, and where your children go to school. It's propaganda, overt and covert. Subverts your mind through every form of media. This is the spiritual war against men. Masculine virtues are attacked. The natural order of life is pended, and this upending is not for the benefit of women, but rather the elites who want dependent, weak, people. These weak people themselves, not realizing how they got this way, want still more restraints on the masculine. They want men and women with feminine values. The elites and their coalitions of the weak would have us all adopt a peasant worldview wherein we cede all sovereignty to the central authority. To read this means you do not laugh off such an idea. You realize that men may roll their eyes at this declaration and pretend to be above it all, but the other side is always plotting new ways to attack, destroy, and demoralize. They want you to give up and ease into the sleepy security of consumer hedonism. They want you enslaved and too distracted, tired, and weak to object. Do not sleepwalk through this life. The world responds to one's actions. The spark, the mood that hits to get out, walk, fight, do something. This is the spark that drives life. How does one go through this life? Speak and live as the man people will not just want to meet, but to follow. Mold yourself into the iron that no magnets can resist. This is the age of Peter Pan the man-child, and nominal adults. The person one presents should be the man of order among the chaos and children. We are not women or children, but men. Do not blame your father. Do not blame your mother. This is your life. The choice to understand the man you are capable of becoming is yours. Each man is capable of beautiful acts of light and monstrous deeds of darkness. We must seek the light and remember the dangerous nature residing in us all. Having standards, living up to them, and enforcing them does not make you an evil man. Acts of kindness and virtue are found even in the simplest no. The easier path, the path of least resistance, is a coward's way to travel through life. What is man's journey but a struggle against the physical 
and spiritual obstacles of this world. You will need to study and train. You will need to govern and harness your emotions. And you will need to be judicious with your speech and in the selection of your friends. Do not deny the need to see the problems at hand, the problems at large, and the problems of the future. Develop your mind and body. Find other good men and have the courage to lead when you can. Develop your will, drive, and the ability to follow through. Do not complain like a child or a peasant, but act like the men who came before you, who struck out to conquer and build. Ours is a time of shying from challenges, of timid men cowed with the fear of failure. Remember that we can only develop our faculties through our earnest efforts and failure. You may have seen this burning out or turtling in an older man, perhaps a father, uncle, or friend, one who in youth was a man of spirit, who had energy and confidence. Something happened, though. The wild exploits ended, the stories became more and more immediate, and his life became insular and safe. In the worst of cases, you can say that some of these men die, but that we only bury their bodies 50 years later. It is not simply age, because you can see this in men in their 20s. The banter they had with friends and family is subdued now. Forget the roaring laughter that had filled a room with. You can't even get them angry. But we all know an older man who still wields a sharp tongue, still has possession or passion for pursuits, and still laughs with gusto. Nor is it domestication. There are plenty of men with wives and children that will still introduce you to a new drink, tell you about an author they have discovered, or show you the motorcycle that they are restoring. When a man's fire has gone out, it is because he did not tend it. He let the world smother it. The Greeks would say that these men lacked thumos. The passion and spirit that coursed through their blood evaporated. It's not entirely their fault, as these men were not even told of the spiritual fire. No one explained how it resides in all men. Ancient man looked up to the night sky and saw gods. Our grandfathers looked up and saw worlds to reach. Modern men deny the stars their respect and look at their phones. Challenges seem too risky. They forget what they're capable of doing. They become dulled by the messages of society rather than listening to their drives and the voices of history. The walk in the forest at night is a challenge and full of danger. At first, it is so dark your eyes may as well be closed. But in a few minutes, they adjust. You see forms, shapes. Vision slowly improves. Venture into the forest each night and your anxiety wanes as the noises become familiar. You begin to identify smells and can sense when it has rained or the forest is beginning a seasonal change. Autumn has a distinct smell, just as spring does. In time, a night walk through the forest becomes an easy stroll. We navigate such realms daily. Media bombards the senses and floods the mind with never-ending new information. Seek the truth, the time-tested. Eliminate the silly and useless thoughts poured into your mind by others. In any journey, during any task, there will be detractors. Unless they are walking with you and working with you, they're not worth any thought. That which can be done today should be done immediately. The future is full of unknown tasks that may prevent you from accomplishing today's challenge. Do not flow with the masses. You are descended from a man who set off into the unknown to build a life. His blood is your blood. Do not succumb to the superficial fads marketed to you by faceless others. A life filled with hollow pursuits becomes hollow itself. The lust for power, the lust for strength are always within you. Our society smothers you with comforts and dulls the senses with hedonism. 
That was part one of chapter one of Masculinity Amidst Madness by Ryan Landry. Back in a minute. Thank you, thank you. Uh, On our next episode will be part two of chapter one of Masculinity Amidst Madness. And that concludes another episode of The Drill. Be honest, be smart, be beautiful, and always ask yourself, what is real, how do I know, and what should I do about it? I'm Ron, and that's The Drill.